quick video showing the use of the debugger. So what I've done here is real briefly, I've just created a new console program in Xcode. And we can see that I have a little bit of code written out here. Basically, we're declaring a variable A, setting it to 5, another B to 4. We then create a new variable C that adds the two. Uh, and then a fourth variable that is the square or the multiplication of C uh, by itself. So let's look at how we would use the debugger as we step through this. Well, first of all, let's go ahead and compile and run it. And so if I build and run, we see that hello world right here prints out on the console. And then we see the print D here printed 81, which is good. But what if I wanted to see how these worked as we step through the program? Well, one of the things you can do is set a breakpoint. And it's super easy to set a breakpoint. What is a breakpoint? A breakpoint is just a place where instead of this running through the entire program, it's actually going to stop at a certain point. So, you know, your computer program is going to run one statement at a time in sequence. So let's say we want to look at A and B and see if they really got these values. We might want to stop right here on line seven. So if I click here, notice it puts this big blue arrow in. And when it does that, that means that's a breakpoint. So when I run again, like this, so I click run, Notice it didn't get all the way to the end. It only got to here, and we can see that because it says, hey, we are at this breakpoint. And down here in our console, we see hello world uh, because that did execute, but we don't see our print D yet because we didn't get to that. And then over here on the left, you can see it's actually showing us the value of the variables. So it sees that we have four variables declared here in this program, and it's giving us the values, and it's actually saying that A is set to 5 and B is set to 4. So you can actually see what the computer is seeing at this point. Then what we can do is say PO uh, A as an example. So PO just means printout. And this is basically going to just follow that command. You're going to print out the value of a variable. And it's the same as what you would see over here. But sometimes uh, these things over here, when you get into more complicated programs, are a little obtuse as far as how you visually see it. And it's easier to just type it out over here, say PO, and then the name of the variable. So now we've actually got to this point. We could just come down here and click the Continue button. And if I click Continue, it's just going to now run to the end of the program because there's no more breakpoints to hit and it completes with an 81 and it says it ended. So let's run this again and now we're at the same point. We did a breakpoint here but let's say we want to go one more statement down. Well one of the things I can do is move the breakpoint. So what I'm doing is I'm left clicking on this and then dragging it down. And when I did that, I've actually moved the breakpoint one step lower. So let's say if we reran again, when we rerun, we're now going to run to this breakpoint right here. So we've stopped now here. And now C actually has a value of 9, which it didn't before. So if I do a POC, I get a value of 9, and that's perfect. Now the other cool thing you can do with these is you can actually step. So for example, I don't have to move the breakpoint down and rerun everything. I could just step from one statement to the next. And I can do that with this uh, button right here, which says step over. So if I step over this statement, I'm basically stepping. I'm not going into a subroutine or a function. I'm just stepping over it, meaning I'm running it. So when I step over, now this statement was executed. Notice it stopped here. This isn't a breakpoint, but we just said just step one step at a time, which is a great way to go through your program. And now we can say POD, and we get 81. And we also see that it's 81 over here. And we could do this right from the beginning, right? I can move this breakpoint right up here to the top, and I can say run. Let's run again. So we stopped right here, right? We, got a, we hit that breakpoint. And then watch what happens. Watch these variables down here. If I step over, oh, there's the print, but none of the variables changed. Then I can step over again. Oh, there's the 5. Step over again. Oh, there's the 4. Step over again. There's the 9. 
and step over again and D became 81. We didn't print anything yet until we step over that last statement and when we do that we get the 81 printed out. Don't worry about this. This is because it just stepped over and then got a little lost because we weren't actually running. So I'll go ahead and run again. One final thing I want to show you is let's suppose you want to get rid of this breakpoint because you don't want it anymore. Well, one of the things you can do is just click once. That kind of just disables it, but it leaves it in that spot. So you might want to re-enable it later and remember that spot in your code. So this is one way to do it. Uh, the, I, I'll put it back to actually being enabled again. The other one is to just click left uh, pad and just shift out or swipe out. And when I do that, I am basically getting rid of it. Another maybe easier way to do that too is up here, there's these little breakpoint window right here. So if I look uh, at these at the top, here's the one that looks like a breakpoint and you can see it has one here. Like if I created a second one, there's a second one. If I created a third breakpoint, there's a third one. Now you can delete these by just selecting and delete, select and delete, select and delete, and I've deleted them. So that is Debugger 101.